man in the back. <laughs> all right, he he is able to like just go all out with. Do you guys see this? I mean, in the back, he he's like full out with the. Yeah, I wonder what the the thing is. I mean, I'm I'm kind of digging it away. I mean, he's got blue boots on. The cameraman's more elaborate than the others. Mm -hmm. All right, continue on, Dinu. Let's see what you got to say. Life, because you're so used to sent niggas and catering to your every emotion. You understand? But we we we're up here as prophets of the Lord. And See that image of Christ right there? That's why she wants to save you. Because in her mind, she thinks she's looking at Christ. You understand? When really she should be paying attention to this black man right here. You understand? That's a real depiction of Christ. No, Christ looks like a black man. And, and now I'm going to read it to you again. Just like I read it. Just like I read it for Jack here. A lying piece of garbage. Now get Jeremiah 14 and 2 again. Because we are here for our people. That's just like I told Jack. And since I'm not trying to insult you, I'm trying to do, educate you a little bit. You understand? I'm not trying to insult you. You ever heard of tough love? I know you never received it before in your life because you're so used to simp niggas and catering to your every emotion. You understand? But we, we, we're up here as prophets of the um, It was uh, interesting to me that they felt the need to spell black and so I was like, well, why don't we just go ahead and spell mourning too, if we're, if that's what we're doing here. That shows you it's to the land. And that's what that's where they get down to the ground. Okay, so that I, th I think that is helping us see what's going on there. But the thing translated black is not describing Judah or Jeremiah or anybody else's phenotype. It's describing the process of your mourning, your languishing, your sad, your depressed during the famine. Or even if you wanted to even stretch it further and make it a little more literal, you can show that it could be a situation where it could be that they're covered like in a soot type situation. You can show that it could be a situation where it could be that they're covered like in a soot type situation. That they're covered like in a soot type situation. <laughs> Sensational. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Recha Ha Kwadash, and double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of Great Millstone. Honors as well to you, brethren, you fellow followers and believers of this faith. And uh, Shalom to the hopefully elect, Shalom to the elect. Peace to you. I want to go here on this video. Uh, I don't. Yeah, here it go. It's called Charlotte Israelites can answer female Christian apologists. Now, again, I, I, I'm not getting this part, <clears throat> not getting this part either, because you notice how they always throw female Christian apologists. But for whatever reason, man and woman are equal. I believe that's what they teach. And this female is here with some tight jeans on coming up into a church dressed like that right to a group of men challenging their masculinity right and this is what Christianity has done to us in a people in, in a whole even the ones that left the so called Christian church they've still adopted the principles and practices of confusion this is what Eve does now Evil challenge you like you're a child. Evil challenge you like like you're just she's just smarter than you. Now Eve could have also went to any other Christian church on the block that teach contrary to what they teach. All the if all those Christian churches taught the same thing, then they all would be be called the same pretty much Christian church. There's so many different denominations in the Christian church. But it's a lot I'm not going to be able to say in this video, but we can see who we, who Eve is set up by and what's her position and, and her job. Now, anyway, to go further into the lesson, this is Jeremiah 14 and 2. <laughs> um, my skin is black uh, unto the ground. 
you see what vocab threw in there and he said if you want to get physical it could mean some soot <laughs> you can sensational <laughs> how he came up with that right <laughs> as future quoted uh, that was sensational I mean they should have had an audience stand up and cheer for that one right uh, anyway you know the reason why we go into we say these color these um these uh, scriptures which we don't say much anymore because at least I don't bring that scripture out a lot uh, because the Israelites are going to look like all nations different skin tones and whatsoever but for truth's sake the Israelites were so called black now the reason why black is in there now if you really think about it like Yahawashah it said as um, he was like fine brass that he burned to a furnace um, what's the other one Acts 13 and 1 was called Niger and they all know that since it said black then that means that excuse separated them from everybody who was white. No, you had different shades of brown and even very darker complexions. Now, in this text, Jeremiah 14 and 2, um, and how they're explaining it, which goes back to the word quada or quada, quada. Um, I've never seen a white person turn black, except when vocab snuck that sensational theory and brought it in and said that you know they might have had soot put on their face now in this video we're going to go to a little commentary and then I'll go to a precept um, it says Judah morning uh, inhabitants of Judah you really think they're going to come out here and say you know what they were Negroes they were black skinned people but for whatever reason it says my skin is black in Job 30 and 30 we'll get into that too but my skin is black right anyway so in their mind they're saying by my skin is black meaning they had to be white or whatever I, I don't know their logic but it's not working because when you're dealing with the Israelites we had different tones of color and um, the darker melanated color was more unique and then you had something called hyperpigmentation, which we'll get into that, Lord's will. Anyway, those are, are the house of Judah as the Targum. These mourned because of the drought and famine uh, that were upon the land. Now, when you really look at that, if it's not about skin color in a, in a, in a, in a whole, the skin would not have to be mentioned unless it shows some changes to the skin right that's why I said that it says and the gates there of language the cities of Judah as Targum and the inhabitants of them which used to be supplied from the field and out of the country gates may be mentioned because their gates uh, the provisions were brought into the city but now none and therefore are said to languish of these of those of else those that sat in the gates are meant the elders of the people uh, the senators the judges and the civil magistrates these shared the common calamity and uh, they are black unto the ground that is the inhabitants of the cities right and those that sit in the gates their faces are black through famine right so whatever do translations and transliterations they're trying to say the word black don't even really need to be there and for our sakes as what we know now no it doesn't because we already know it's easy to see when you read Deuteronomy 28 when you go to the curses of Deuteronomy 28 and 48 the yoke of iron upon thy neck till thou be destroyed it's very convincing but for whatever reason in the 16, 17 hundreds 18 hundreds the yoke of iron upon our neck for all those years, nope, doesn't have anything to do with the Holy Bible, right? The slave ships, and how they changed the translations on that, and said you should sell yourselves, and the original uh, text never said that. And why would uh, slave ships even be relevant if it's that close 
from Israel to Egypt. The slaves, even if it was slave ships, it's not a relevant thing because that's not a real atrocity to, to travel that short of a distance on a ship. But it is to travel a year and a half to two years from one cross the waters to another land that you don't know of. And this Eve standing here with the pants and the bright nails and the permed hair and everything, this is the, the root cause. Well, this is uh, the example of Jeremiah 17 and 4. As I'm just trying to say it the best way I can say it. Anyway, it says go to Lamentations 4 and 8. Let's go to Lamentations 4, verse 8. It says um, their visage is blacker than coal, right? They are not known in the streets. Their skin cleaveth to their bones. It is withered. It is become like a stick, right? So we can clearly see. You are, it is talking about continents. It is talking about the situation. But it also explains. Let's go to. Let me go to. Job 30 and 30. It says. My skin turns black on me. These are different translations. My skin turns black on me. My skin grows black. Somebody need to show me. A white person. Whose skin did turn black on them. I'll wait for that. My skin grows black and peels. Right? My skin has turned dark. And my bones burn with fever. Now, this is the same thing we had the argument about the ruddy. And then you read the translations. And it says, a beautiful dark continence. But somehow, through their Christian racism... They want to put soot on on a, a white face to make them black. Haven't y'all done enough? Haven't you took the painting, the true paintings of the, the images of our Lord and the prophets and took white coverings and covered their face? See, there has to be something to that. In order to, to, to as Apostle Bar quotes, in order to, to, um, to tell a lie, you must know the truth. And we can clearly see there's no way when you look at these images why would they have to paint them white if everybody was already white why didn't they refurbish them white why didn't they just redo them with the white complexions no they didn't do that see here we have a case here of pure christian hardcore racism who are still trying to scramble and cover and make up a doctrine to fit their doctrine to bring you back into bondage. But it's too much information. It's too much proof. Now, <clears throat> this man sits here and makes fun of, look, I we don't agree with ICBK. <clears throat> Their doctrine is definitely off. But they're right on, uh, you know, teaching us to be Israelites. But this woman, you see what she's wearing in the congregation. This is what Christians do. Let your woman keep solace in the churches, as also saith the law. We can get this in the book of Numbers. But that's another video. Um, let's go here. It says, hyperpigmentation on dark skin. This happened to Israelites, and not only Israelites, non-Israelites, other heathen nations, such as the Ethiopians and various Sudan, Sudanians and Sudan, which our people are mixed amongst them. Right? When famine hit, you get a darker, ashy complexion. Right? Now they're trying to make it seem like it's white people with hyperpigmentation when they don't have pigmentation. Anyway, melanin. Hyperpigmentation is common in dark skin and occurs when an area of the skin becomes darker than the surrounding skin, um, usually in a patch or spot. Okay? Um, it's more challenging to treat in darker than lighter skin tones. I just wanted to bring that out. Hyperpigmentation is common in black skin. In fact, it's one of the top five most commonly diagnosed skin conditions in black people. 
While hyperpigmentation is physically harmless, it is typically more severe and longer lasting in black skin. Right? So when you're dealing with like a form of malnutrition, um, a form of an autoimmune disease, because that's what it would be when a body turns on itself. And what is the largest, okay, so-called organ on the body? Your skin. This is why the skin is mentioned. This is why you see this in Job um, 30 and 30. My skin grows black upon me. My skin turns black upon me. This wasn't put here in a sense to recognize that all the Israelites were black. This was put here to show through a situation what, to show what happened to a people that were destroyed. That's why I was put there. And it ultimately help us see and identify what the Israelites really look like. Because after all, our identity was totally wiped away. So this only makes sense that we can look into this history and see it. Now, when you look at the mouth of brass, Phineas, which I've done several videos on that in the past. Um, I believe even Elder Yasha Wamba shared a clip on that. But a while ago when I looked up this word Phineas and I saw Mouth of Brass, I went into the, uh, well, let me get that real quick. Let me see. I'm going to just type it in real quick with the um, Mouth of Brass, what it means, right? So we can get a understanding of the Israelites. Mouth of Brass origin and meaning it actually means Phineas in the 1897 Bible Dictionary um, mouth of brass from old Egypt the Negro son of Eleazar uh, I believe the grandson of Aaron and then when you look at the lineage of Moses and everybody else well wait a minute this is not adding up and this is your white scholars who have brought this out you can't get around it the Israelites was so called black people now again the black does describe the suffering but out of the suffering showed the results of famine pestilence you know and a condition like if we went through a serious condition right now and let's say it's really hot and someone's feet swell up, you'll say, my feet has swollen dark. You know, just making an example. It's really easy to see. But we see here how vocab has made the sensational statement, right? On the left-hand side, there it, that is, to say that maybe they put soot on their feet. You can't make this stuff up. This is just ridiculous. But lastly, let's look up this word sensational. Arousing or tending to arouse a quick, intense, and usually superficial interest, curiosity of emotion, emotional reaction. That's all I have on that, Shalom.